Well, good morning and welcome to Zen Fits. As you can see, the sun is coming in the uh, front door uh, through the foyer and it's landing on my Buddha, my little Hote that I got uh, this weekend. Well, he's not little, I mean, he's pretty big. And so, <laughs> so I'm kind of like playing this uh, Stonehenge uh, game for a, uh, for a while. So when the sun hits the Buddha, I give a talk. And just like, you know, in the ancient, you know, Stonehenge and the pyramids and all these ancient uh, structures uh, were designed so when the sun rose, a beam of light would strike a spot and enliven the statue and enliven the, the structure and the temple, you see. And so the sun rises here and it goes through the front door and when it, when it works it way up the floor and it lands on the belly and the face of my Buddha, I give a talk. <laughs> so anyway, thank you for dropping in. Let's see what kind of fit we can have today. Um, the first thing I was writing about this, or yesterday, and then I continued writing about it this morning, uh, was something that um, I, I, it helps me understand uh, what has happened to our politics. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, uh, I'm a biblical thinker. Uh, you, my friends may not think that, see that, but I am. I see the Old Testament and the New Testament being reenacted in our civilization, Western civilization, over and over and over again, you see. Uh, and just like, uh, but, but in different clothes, in different contexts, in different uh, uh, settings, you know, like a plot of a play that opens up with a different play, different setting, maybe it's in takes place in uh, uh, Rome, or it takes place in Manhattan, or, or uh, Louisiana, wherever it, take, it takes on the characters of that region, but the plot's the same, you see. So this is kind of like, I look at the Old Testament, New Testament that way, as, as uh, um, uh, formulas that get reenacted with different contexts. And it helps me understand uh, the, what has happened to our politics today, uh, where we have a division of worldviews. We don't have a political division. Uh, we don't have an a argument over policies and uh, the game of politics. You see, politics used to be a game in the sense that you fought like heck during the day, but in, after the bell rang uh, and you, at happy hour, you'd go have a drink, uh, go have a beer with your opponent. You see, that was the way politics used to be uh, in the sense that everyone knew it was a game, that you fought intensely, but at the end of the, you know, when the, when the bell rang, uh, you, you went out and had dinner together. But now that's over, you see. Now it's more like uh, Protestants and Catholics. It's kind of like a, a religious war uh, where you have two actually different ways of seeing reality. And so there is, and, and we're puzzled by that. We, how can they not? How can the other side, whether it's left or right, how can how can how can can't they just see it? It's right there in plain sight, you see, but they don't. So, I, I understand this through the my understanding of Old Testament and New Testament. So the way I see it is that uh, take the, the Old Testament uh, is is uh, Judaism. I mean that was before, you know. B.C., <laughs> before Christ, you know. So Judaism is, a, is an ethnic, ethnic religion about a tribe, Hebrews, who had a covenant with their God, Yahweh. And the people had a covenant with God. So they were, felt that the, all tribes feel they're chosen. All tribes feel they have a covenant. Well, anyway, the Jews were able to write their history down. So they had a, they, they, they were able to see their history metaphorically. So their history became uh, God's history with them. Their history became the Bible, became the story of their relationship with God. Great. But this was about a people. So in order to get in a special relationship with God, you had to be Jewish. I mean, you had to be born a Jew. You couldn't, you couldn't uh, believe you were, you know, it wasn't a belief system, it was a birth system. 
So it was rather limited. They weren't really interested in expanding Judaism because you have to be born a Jew, so you can't expand it. It makes something born, you know. In other words, it was, a, it was literally, you had to be born of a Jewish mother, period. So oh, Christianity took that special idea with God, the special covenant with God, and created a belief creedal religion. So you could become a Christian and have a special covenant with God through Christ or belief, you see. So anyway, but the point is that the, the Old Testament idea is a people with a covenant. Well, what happened in our country when the, uh, in the uh, late 60s, when Johnson passed the Civil Rights Act, he knew that the Southern Democrats were going to flee the party because they were segregation, now segregation forever. But George Wallace ran as an independent, and that's what he said, segregation now, segregation forever. Their worldview was the world was divided racially into white and black. That had been the worldview of the South for 300 years. So they weren't going to give up their worldview. So they left. And Nixon invited them into the Republican Party. He said, wait a minute, they're on. Wallace, you know, they can't go independent. Let's bring them on in. So the GOP became the GOD party. And I remember this. We are, those of you who have a little memory can remember Jerry Falwell, the moral majority, and the TV evangelicals, when there was cable TV hit and these televangelists became uh, merged with the Republican Party, and it became uh, God's party. And, and for decades, the Republicans maintained power by being the value party, the, the, the uh, America's party, the patriotic party, uh, the true Americans, the real men, the real Americans, you see. Liberalism became uh, yeah, the latte drinking, Feet, uh, a bunch of pussies, you know, they can't lead, you know, yada, 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 you know. But the point is, I'm trying to make here, that the, the Republican Party became like, the, they kind of, again, uh, they, they became the chosen party in a religious sense. And so they became a toxic mix of politics and religion by changing, by structuring the language symbolically. So it was saying two things at the same time. So if you said, if Reagan said, uh, the welfare queens are taking away uh, all your money, the Southern Democrats knew what they were talking about. <laughs> In other words, you, you, you knew what the code was, so you, you, you know, aha, uh -huh, well, we're getting, you know, we're, we're getting to eat our cake and keep it too. You see, we're get, getting to uh, have racist policies, have segregation, at the same time not be segregationists, be family values, you know, be, be patriotic and so forth. So this toxic mech of language, you see, and the language then kind of like points rationally, it's rational, scientific, rational language, talking about rational policies with the logic behind it, but it meant the opposite. So you get so you get this uh, he he under the table. <laughs> you know, on the surface we're saying this, but under the surface we all know it means this. You see, and so that became kind of like this covenant with hypocrisy. <laughs> this this covenant uh, with with uh, the God with two faces. This covenant with. You can get rid of your racism and keep it too, kind of thing, you know. So that became a toxic mix uh, that actually generated power. Now, I talked about this the other day. You take a, take a battery, for instance. Uh, there's a battery over there, but I don't want to hold it up. But a battery contains the positive and the negative. Right, and you put the positive and the negative together in a container like a battery, you generate energy in there. You have 
energy. So this, this toxic mix of opposites, positive and negative, in other words, you have positive policies with a negative intent. That's, that would be a metaphor. The battery, the political, the GOP would be a metaphor for a battery that holds a positive and negative together. It holds opposites together, you see. And when you hold opposites together in a container like a battery, that generates energy. And so this GOP battery of containing two contradictory commandments that are mutually dependent, but yet opposite, and it holds them together, generates energy or the passion to vote. Voting is energy. If you can drive out a vote, you know, if you can make people vote, you can make people get off their couch and go vote, you see, that is energy. You are creating energy for power to do stuff, to stay in power. So this toxic mix of religion and secular, of, uh, of, of surf, surf, surface intent and riptide intent, you see, like two currents, you know, you got the, all the currents going to the shore, we're going to the promised land, but the other, but the riptide there is going in the opposite direction. When you get this together and you can hold it in a political container, you generate energy by just throwing out the, the, the triggers to trigger the energy, like gay marriage or uh, LBGT uh, for, or guns. They're taking away your freedom. Ah, oh, bam, that triggers the energy that connects the opposites at the voting booth, and people vote. And then when it's over, all the energy goes back, you see, and they, they vote the battery into power. So this is kind of like the stumbling upon a self-generating energy system that is built like a battery upon containing two opposite commandments. And the two opposite commandments are, don't be racist, be racist. <laughs> you know, like, like, you know, and you can't do both at the same time. I mean, that's, that's, the, that, that's called a double bind. A double bind is when you have two imperatives that you must obey, but they're contradictory. And we get into these all the time. We can discover these, these little dilemmas, like the most classic one, uh, women or men fall into them when you're in the romantic vein. Uh, when you've got, a woman's got two suitors. Who should I choose? They're both fascinating in their own way. They're both equal. Oh, I want him, but then I won't get him. Oh, I want him, but then I won't get him. Or two jobs. Oh, I want this job, but then I don't get that one. But if I get that one, I don't get this one. You see, so wah, wah, wah. So that creates a feedback loop, like when you stick a mic into an amplifier. Wah, 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 wah. And we go to a friend, help me choose. Or we go to a therapist, help me get out of this. A double bind is when the mind gets caught in a uh, feedback loop of opposite choices, both of which have to be chosen but can't, you see. And then it goes wah, 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 wah. Turn it off, you see. Well, if you can create a battery or a system that contains that wah, wah, you generate energy. And that's what the GOP did by mixing religion and, and sect and rationalism, religion and politics, you see. So, so but this today, this is all kind of like coming apart. All of the uh, polls, the, the, the uh, principles that held the Republican Party together are all weakening. It's all weakening. Jerry Falwell is weakening. Uh, the, gun, the NRA is weakening, it's corrupt. Uh, Trump has taken the party, the principal party, the God party, off a cliff. So all of its strengths that, that were rock solid, you see, uh, mm, uh, are crumbling, you know, nothing lasts. Nothing can hold up. The conditions are changing. The conditions are changing and the old battery is running down. The batteries run down, you see. The generator. 
So you get a battery, that, that rechargeable battery. Well, the GOP has been like a rechargeable battery. Every election it recharges by, by, by re-energizing the, 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 uh, the, the, the hypocrisy, <laughs> let's put it that way, by, by energizing the triggers. And so this battery is running down. It's running down. Thanks for dropping in, and I'll see you next time.